Well, good evening, everyone. This is Patricia, and I am traveling for history. Well, quite frankly, I'm just traveling down memory lane. I'm in Burlington, Vermont, and in front of us is Burlington High School. BHS is my alma mater. That's a Latin phrase, which means nourishing mother. It's used in conjunction with educational institutions because the idea is that education feeds us. It nourishes our soul. When I read that my high school will very likely be torn down, a chunk of my heart was ripped out of my chest. The reason for this is that BHS is contaminated with PCBs, polychlorinated biphenols, cancer-causing agents, which are toxic to humans and terrible for our Earth. Burlington voters approved a $70 million bond, that's a 7-0, $70 million bond, to clean the high school. But then officials realized, oh, wait, 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 this is much, much worse than we thought. It's, PCBs really have infested the school. It's not only in the very caulking of the building, but they have also leached into the ground beneath. School officials are looking to find a, a different place to build a another high school, the fifth incarnation of Burlington High School. So on the front there, I'm not sure you can see it. Let me see if I can pan in so maybe you can read it. But I, I almost doubt it. Underneath the words Burlington High School, it says Milton L. Hard Building. Milton L. Hard had been a school teacher and a coach, a football coach. He lived from 1891 to 1965. This school was built in 63 or 64. The first graduating class would have been 1965, but he, he died that year. So anyway, his name is on the front in, uh, in his honor. Since this is my high school, just wanted to share a few things because uh, there's nothing like reading that it may be torn down that makes me wax about the, on about the past. And um, in my case, I was a good student and very active. I was in the drama club. I was stage crew and worked up to stage manager. I was one of three students who helped bring back the BHS Register. That's the school newspaper. When I think about how the students who write for it now have been recognized nationally for their reporting, there's a journalism department as well. And I think, wow, that is so doggone amazing. Congratulations. Huge congratulations. It's fantastic. I was also uh, active with the... Oh, oh, and by the way, also when uh, I was involved with the school newspaper, these are paper copies because although uh, I don't really want to tell you when I grad graduated, I will say in two years, I am facing a, a fairly monumental... Uh, decade number. Uh, stunning how that works. And the thing is, most of us are, are want to think, wow, what happened? How did those, all those years go by? Well, and then the next thought, we know how that the time went by. Working, volunteering, spending time with friends and family. 
enjoying our leisure time and for me, well, you know, traveling for history. But uh, so there was no such thing as personal computers or the internet or anything like that when I was in high school. He gets nothing like that at all. So paper copies we sold 10 cents a pop. Teachers were pretty good about spending 10, 10 cents on something. So I often would go around the school and, and uh, sell these copies uh, to, well, prim- primarily to teachers, but sometimes to students as well. Now, uh, we did have to have hall passes. Uh, admittedly, I never had a hall pass to do that. But one day I was in, uh, I want to say it was D building, D's and dog, D building. And there was a teacher sitting there in the hall. To this day, I can't remember who it was. It was a female teacher, but I don't remember who it was. But uh, she knew me, and I did recognize her. Um, she wanted to know where my hall pass was. Now, I had an armful of the uh, register. Um, I said, well, I'm here selling the newspaper. and uh, you know, She was definitely an old school sort of teacher. But in the end, she let me go on my way. Thank you to whoever that was. Uh, no, she would not buy a copy of the paper. And no, I would not give her one. It cost 10 cents a copy, for pity's sake. I was uh, the one who sold the most copies. And uh, I did become circulation manager. <laughs> That's funny. I was also uh, active in the school literary publication called Detour. Not sure that's still around. Uh, I was managing editor of that. Miss Elmer was the teacher who who oversaw it. uh, Dorothy Elmer. And and I believe she's dead now. I believe most of my teachers are dead now. At least many of them are dead now. Many were retiring, uh, were uh, approaching retirement age when uh, I was in school. So, certainly older. And I started the Latin newspaper. Apparently I had time in my hands. Not true, but apparently I felt like I had the time to do that. Now, uh, as I recall, the name, in, the name was in Latin, but uh, the English translation was, we look back upon an age. Two words in Latin for all those words in English. But one of the words was speculum. Two female teachers, nope, don't remember who they were, approached me and said, oh, you can't use that word. It's a terrible word. It's a terrible word. You can't use it. So I asked, well, why not? I didn't know. They clammed right up. But then they went on again. You can't use that word. It's a terrible word. It's a terrible word. You just can't use it. And when I asked again, well, why not? Nothing. You know, they just said to me, well, you know, Patricia, the word speculum is a means, you know, it's a medical instrument used during a gynecological examination. Well, ding, ding, ding. Would it change the doggone name? But they did not, and neither did I. So, and I, I almost doubt that that's still around, but, I mean, who knows? Could be. Latin is still taught here. German, Spanish, I think French, all, all taught here when I was here. Chinese is now taught here. How amazing is that? Wow, that is fantastic. Burlington High School is um, divided into six buildings. A, B, C, D, E, and F. F is also known as the Burlington Technical Center. And students, not only students who are uh, Burlington High School students, but uh, other students from other schools in, in Chittenden County can also uh, learn a trade at Burlington Technical Center. A building, which is the one that's right in front of us, is the largest. It contains the auditorium, gymnasium, music department, and cafeteria. When I was a student here, the principal's office was also here. I presume it's still uh, still down in A building, uh, along with all the admins that made it a fairly large office. And then uh, 
there was Pearl and her switchboard. And please, in the comments, um, correct me if I'm if I'm wrong about her name. Or uh, I'm pretty sure she ran a switchboard, though. Pretty sure she was a smoker and uh, could also smoke in her office. As I recall, she had a gravelly sort of sound to her voice, too. But uh, but please, uh, if you if you want to write in the comments to correct me, I, I'm not offended by being corrected at all. And share your stories. I mean, talking about high school for pity's sake. Uh, for those who had a good time in high school, it's fun to walk down memory lane. And for others who did not, well, I'm sorry that was not your experience. The buildings being labeled A through F, I, mean, I don't know about you, but that just reminds me of a um, uh, report card. Uh, I don't know, how apropos is that? Now, uh, buildings, uh, let me see, B, C, D, and E, as I recall, are two stories tall. A building and F, I believe, are three stories tall each. It's hard to see that from this angle for A building, but if I were looking at from the side of it, it would be more obvious that that's the case. Uh, let me see, Bill, B building is for um, language and um, the arts. Those are the classes taught in B building. C building, history and English. D for exploratory programs. E for science and math. I'm trying to remember which building had the business prep courses. Typing, yep, not keyboarding. Remember, no PCs were of, of around back then. And shorthand. Wow, shorthand. I don't think that's taught at all anymore. But uh, the courses like that anyways. So if you remember, write down in the comments below. Please refresh my memory because I didn't take those classes. I, I took typing after I graduated from uh, college. I was using a manual typewriter. Uh, back then in college to write my papers. Two fingers on the keys, 32 words per minute. I took typing, which had all my fingers and my thumbs on the keys, and I was doing 32 words per minute. <laughs> I type much faster now uh, on the keyboard, but um, <laughs> but still. This was a quite a few years ago. Let me go ahead and uh, take a walk, show you some things. Oh, by the way, up by North Avenue, uh, there is a, a bus cut out for the city bus. Uh, I Something back in the day, and I think this is still true, school buses do not transport Burlington, Vermont students to their schools. Uh, they get rides from people, they walk, they ride the bike, their bikes, and uh, they take the city bus. As I move closer to the building, the two doors that we see, and I'll pan in, those two doors right there are the auditorium, as I recall. Can't imagine they would have changed that. Why would they? How could they? How could they? And I'm walking closer to the front door because there's a bell over here. I can't remember which school this came from, so let's take a let's take a walk and see what it says. Because I see a a bronze plaque. Huh. Okay. So the bell. Let's see if I can pan in so you guys can see it too. That's the best I can do it on my phone. It says uh, Clinton H. Hmm. I think that's what's it, Manili? I think that's Manili. Bell Company. Troy, New York, USA, AD 1883. I'm willing to bet it came off of the 
third incarnation of the school. And then down here, it says, Paul S. Daniel, in appreciation, 33 years of service, Burlington Schools, dated 1994. Mr. Daniel was principal when I was a student here. I always thought he was a nice guy. Uh, uh, he is dead now. He's also buried in Shelburne, Vermont, in their, in their cemetery there. The clapper has been, oops, pan out, has been removed. Can you imagine what that would sound like with uh, high school kids here? Yeah, that would be unpleasant at best. Of course, the uh, seahorse right there, seahorses, that's the school's mascot. And you know why that's the school mascot? I think you'll enjoy this story. When I was a student years ago, one of the secretaries, yep, secretaries, because that was the title they used, was secretary, uh, told me that when they were breaking ground to build the, the, the school in the 1800s, they discovered a fossil of a seahorse. And that's when they decided to make the seahorse the school mascot. I love that. I have always loved that story. I hope you do too. And as long as we're here, let's look at the cornerstone because I see it. I see it now. Maybe you see it already too, but uh, it is my habit of telling you everything. So, 1963, Freeman, French Freeman Architects. And I will pan in for your viewing pleasure. Now, Freeman, French Freeman, uh, that architectural firm is still around was known for building in the international style. What does that mean? Well, the international style means that no matter at which angle one looks at the building, it looks the same all the way around. Another example of that in Burlington, the Hilton Hotel on Battery Street. If you're older as I am, you would think the Radisson perhaps first, but it's the Hilton Hotel now. And uh, uh, 10 North Champlain Street, it's a corner of uh, Pearl and Champlain Streets, North Champlain Streets. Uh, that's also in the international style. So uh, think square or rectangular, typically rectangular buildings. Coming over here to look at this other sculpture. I'm not sure if this were around when I was a student here. Uh, pan up. You can get a good look at that. Yeah, I don't know, I don't see a I don't see a plaque telling us what this is of. But it's kind of interesting that there are these um, cutouts. There's this one, this one here, for instance. And there's another one It's behind this uh, cement bench uh, right here. But um, unfortunately, I can't see. The sun is right on my viewer, and I can't see what that's looking like for you. There is... A cutout on that side as well. Perhaps you can see that. I can't. But uh, as I walk around, I will say these corridors that are uh, glass encased, maybe they're plexiglass nowadays, I don't know, they were glass when I was here. Uh, Blooming cold, Ooh, not heated. 
really, really cold in the winter time. I'm pleasantly humid the rest of the time of the year. Just really unpleasant overall. Oops. Wanted to show you the signage over here. Caution contains PCP cancer hazard. <sighs> I don't know. That's just danger PCBs polychlorinated by phenols. <sighs> The things that made VHS really wonderful was being able to be on the grass. The outdoor area outside of C building, first floor C building, was a smoking area for the, well, the students. And, uh, well, you know, <laughs> I, I, I don't, uh, actually, it does say right here, the use of tobacco products on these grounds is prohibited. Vermont State Law, July 1, 1995. That did not apply to me. I graduated earlier than that. But um, before that. But uh, so I guess there's no smoking areas here anymore. Oopsie. <laughs> You can see where it says BHS up there, above the front doors. And uh, I remember this sign, this one right here that says, Visitors, please report to main office. <laughs> wow. Oh, it just brings back so many, many memories. Wow. It's just incredible, isn't it? flag is over here. I don't know what that building is. That was not here when I was a student here. I have a few more stories to share with you, so I'll go ahead and do that because I can and there's time. <laughs> and as long as there's time, there's, there's time to uh, have a chat. And I do so love to chat. Oh, you know, across the way there, the athletic field. And just uh, two nights ago, there was uh, some uh, event, a uh, track and field sort of event, um, because this place was really hopping. There is uh, the DG Weaver, home of the Seahorses Athletic complex uh, over to the left which you can't see uh, because of the parking lots uh, there's a ball field they were playing they were I think practicing uh, that so also in the comments below if you could indulge me now the parking lot on the other side was for students I believe it was dirt and I don't think it was two levels either. I think it was just the lower level, but please correct me because I did not have a car until college. So I have no idea, none whatsoever. So if you want to uh, tell me, that would be fantastic. All right, so some stories from my past. Uh, some more stories from my past with about uh, BHS. Let's see. After I graduated from college, it kind of came full circle. I worked as a substitute teacher for about a year and a half, including here at, uh, at the high school, subbing for a class whose teacher I had my senior year in high school, Mr. Thompson. If he's still alive, it was his, uh, I think it was his first year as a as a, a teacher out of college. So uh, he, he is likely still alive. Shout out to Mr. Thompson. Please let me know if he is still around. Since I do know 
that some are not. So it really felt like I had come full circle as a, a student and then as a, as a teacher, albeit a substitute one. But I will say, on that front, I had an amazing history teacher, Mrs. Kalinowski. And last I knew, she actually is still alive. And she volunteers at a local library in Chittenden County. I'll not tell you which one, but... Uh, Anyway, she, um, she was so excited, so, so, so excited about uh, teaching history. How many of us can say that, honestly? How many of us can say that? I don't think too many. And that's a shame. History is fascinating. It's interesting. And as I want to say on Instagram, history is electric. Having said that, I was on the uh, college prep track here and trying to decide in what I wanted to major. And I can directly relate the fact that I decided to earn a degree in history because of Mrs. Kalinowski. Uh, her first name was Sarah, but she went by Sally. I don't usually know the first names of the teachers I had had, but that one, I know. I had written out a, a, a note card for her and left it with her. So, you know, telling her that uh, what I just told you that she was the reason why I decided to major in history in, in college. I went on to say, uh, I taught for nearly 20 years, all told, including substitute teaching. And I adopted, adapted to her teaching style. I wanted people to be as interested in what I was teaching as I was interested in what she was teaching. She got the note and uh, we met at the library where she volunteers. First thing out of her mouth, first thing, first thing, it's too funny. She said, your hair is grayer than mine. And then laughed insanely. So, I just think that's hysterical. It is true. My hair is no longer a dark brown. It is, um, well, my hairdresser calls it silver because she's gracious, but let's face it, it's just gray. One other story I wanted to share with you because I would really love it if someone could share, should shed some light on this. There was a young man, fellow student, class of 1982, who I had a crush on. I'll just go ahead and say it. I had a crush on him. Chris Oliver. Such a nice young man. Cute, smart, listened. Such a nice guy. I think you see where this is going, right? He died. In fact, it made uh, the Burlington Free Press above the fold. I seem to recall it has something to do with a drunk driver. And uh, to be honest, I couldn't bear to read the article in the Free Press back in the day. So if someone else knows, I'd really appreciate it if you put in the comments below. This is all I really wanted to say about Burlington High School, my alma mater. And uh, would love to hear your stories or read your stories in the comments. We're talking about high school and isn't high school an interesting place.
It was for me. Hope it was for you. And as any, if any, as any other YouTuber would say, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and let us share our love of history with others. Shall we? I would love that. I'm also uh, on Instagram. Use a hashtag traveling for history 101. You'll find me. You'll find my pictures. You'll find my uh, my videos. And uh, it'd be great if you wanted to follow me there. I post daily to Instagram. And I post almost daily to YouTube. So, thanks so much for watching. Really, really appreciate it. You have a great day, and until next time, be careful.